Hey guys, it's Shades here, and I am here with the amazing, talented, and lovely Miss Monica Real. Monica, how are we doing today? We, I'm doing great. I mean, well, it's great being in a global pandemic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me, I I'm doing okay. <laughs> Normally, I'd love to do. I love to doing uh, these things in person, but yeah, here we are, kind of forced to do it this way. But hey, we still got it. Hey, but you're teaching me Discord. I like. I have no idea how this works, so I'm learning as I'm being there. It's great. <laughs> Glad I got help. At least in that regard but let's let's get down to the interview stuff <laughs> i always like to start with a nice fun question to start off with so you know given that you worked in hiroaka i gotta ask if you were given your own quirk what would yours be well uh this is especially pertinent right now um i have always said that i would want my quirk to be like teleportation so i could just be able to like close my eyes or wiggle my nose and end up in a different area or a different place now even more so because you know i need to go visit my family and make sure that they're okay so if i didn't have to make that drive to houston and I could just wiggle my nose and surprise, I'm here. Oh, that would be so nice. Plus, you get to kind of scooch on over to other countries without having to quarantine for two weeks. That'd be kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> also, wiggle your nose. Yeah, Sounds just- like someone's been watching I Dream of Genie a lot. <laughs> Well, I've been watching WandaVision, which makes me want to go back and watch some of the other shows that are inspired, that inspired WandaVision. So, yeah. I'm that kind of makes sense. That, that makes <laughs> sense. Now, getting on to the more actual question question. I, I was actually just double checking everything. And considering you have been doing voice acting since back in 99 and just have a host of characters, especially a lot of main characters that you've gotten over the years. What, what is it like looking back and seeing the history that you've, you've basically put together? Um, <laughs> it's one of those things where I don't even realize like how much it's been sure where somebody goes hey what's your favorite character like my brain's cataloging and going through all the characters i'm like whoa that's that's a lot but it's not until somebody else brings it up that i'm like wow i really have been blessed and that i have just I've been working, I continue to work, and I am just so thankful that it is continually coming my way. And sometimes the sheer number of it is crazy. I had a gentleman come to a convention and he had a poster he had created that had every single character that I had voiced, at least according to Anime News Network. And he put it on the table and rolled it out and it rolled down the table and onto the floor. And I started crying because a happy cry, but it because it was like I've never seen it like in a tangible form, you know, to see all of these characters and I was just going down the list reminiscing and all nostalgic but it really was an impactful moment because just to watch that thing roll across the table and onto the floor it's like oh my god all of those are like little pieces of gold that I've put into every single one of these characters over 20 some odd years and so it was it was a moment but sometimes unless something like that is presented to me I kind of forget (laughs) (laughs) I'm so focused on the now (laughs) I know exactly how that is sometimes I really do you know, and speaking of history, you know, when it comes to the, the anime that everybody knows, of course, one of your big accomplishments was uh, a few years back getting the chance to take over as Bulma in the Dragon Ball Z franchise and Dragon Ball Super. What was it like, you know, being able to play such an iconic role? Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I was a huge fan of the series because my, my little brother was a huge fan before it ever came to the United States. We used to watch it on television in Spain. And so, uh, you know, I joke saying that I voiced every character in Dragon Ball Z before I was ever in Dragon Ball Z because I would have to like translate for him and I would do all the voices and stuff. So then when I came to work at Funimation and I got to know a lot of the cast and they were all so cool and welcoming and fun. I'm like, God, these people are great. I never ever thought that I would get the opportunity to audition. So when Chris called me into audition and uh, Bulma's picture popped up, it it took everything in my power not to scream or squeal (laughs) like a fangirl. I was like, oh my God, it's Bulma. So this is Bulma and he's explaining everything thing and I'm acting like, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> like I haven't seen the entire show. <laughs> It was really weird. And and then once I was cast, like I remember calling my brother and like, you cannot tell anybody I signed an NDA. Do not tell anyone, but I'm playing Bulma. And to have my brother be so excited was a huge big sister moment. Like, uh, it was just awesome. And then working on the show was, it was tricky because in the beginning, especially I wanted to pay homage to what Tiffany Ballmer had done. So I watched a lot of her work. And then in the beginning of Kai, we kind of started out trying to pay homage to her more. So kind of trying to match her reads and her cadence 
cadence. And then as Kai went on, I kind of made it my own so that by the time we got to the Boo Saga, you saw more of my Bulma instead of just, you know, mine and Tiffany's merged, you know, if you will. Makes sense. So, but since then, I mean, I absolutely love her and I feel like she's such a, such a strong character that I've really gained a lot of my own strength from her. So she's just been huge and I love her so much and she's such a fun character and she's such a good role model for girls. Like to have this powerful woman that is an incredible scientist and, you know, has all the money <laughs> and <laughs> does all of these wonderful things and isn't afraid to stand up to the big baddies. Like that's awesome. So cool. I'm so, I'm so thankful. <laughs> it's definitely an awesome thing to see here. You pull that off and, you, and you, yeah, it's really works well with it. But, you know, we mentioned the history, the, all the characters you've done. Of course, the fact that you've done so many characters means you've covered every kind of character you can do, you know, from wholesome characters like, you know, Suyu Asui to the, you know, the attitude characters like Bulma 2. Well, the perverted characters, let's just call it what it is. <laughs> you know, Stocking, Uzaki-chan, you know, a couple... Of, hell, you even had a small part in Interspecies Reviewers. Let's, you know... what I, I, the, the question I have to bring from that is, is like, what do you feel about... How do you feel about playing such a diverse group of characters over the years? Like, those, to do those... Be able to do those kind of, you know, pervy characters on top of what people expect from a, an animated series. I think just the wide range. That's one of the things that I love about anime is that it's not any one genre. You know, it's kind of like looking at film as a whole. You have your comedies, you have your etchy, you have your, like, there's just a little bit of everything. And I think that honestly, that's why I've had such a long career is I have ADHD like a mofo. And the fact that this job constantly is throwing different things at me and totally different kinds of characters and totally different kinds of stories, it keeps me engaged and it keeps it fun for me. I never know from day to day if I'm going to be in a booth crying or if I'm going to be laughing hysterically or if I'm going to be murdering a hero or if I'm going to be in an etchy show. Like, you just don't know. And that's part of what makes it so exciting to me. Now, granted, some shows, it gets a little like, ew. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, that's my own personal opinion and I have to separate it from the job at hand. But I always think it's, you know, tongue in cheek. I'm not easily offended by stuff. So, you know, it's kind of fun and silly and my agent will always be like hey you know there's another show that's kind of questionable and I'm like well you know what it's my voice it's not like I'm having to show my boobs so (laughs) who cares if I'm voicing a character who shows theirs like whatever (laughs) that's actually an interesting way of looking at it but let's let's go flip to the other side of that thing because we got to talk about you know I don't normally talk about specific anime too often but there is one anime that quite frankly we have to talk about and I have to ask it with one simple question have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? Of course I have. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like working on ghost stories? Like, it, I mean, I have to say, first of all, please don't watch ghost stories and think that any of the actors have those opinions. <laughs> the, director li- the director literally sought out, he's like, I want to offend every person walking the face of the earth. So <laughs> we, put, <laughs> we put stuff in there to offend everyone, and it was offensive in 2000. So you can only imagine. Like now it's like super duper offensive. (laughs) You couldn't Um, get away with this today. Uh, no, there's no way. There's no way. But hey, as far as creatively, it was one of my favorite processes because we got to ad lib so much. And Stephen Foster is so funny and so creative and had all of these wacky ideas. Like we had some threats and death threats at the studio because of the show. And now to have it be so celebrated. And I mean, I can't go to a convention anywhere without somebody asking about ghost stories. And that's huge. And it's such a special thing. I don't I don't think we'll ever get to do anything like that again <laughs> because i think the japanese learned their lesson on that one but i love it in fact i'm working on a new show that i can't talk about yet but the director when we were working on it she was like yeah it's kind of like momoko from ghost stories and it just all came back to me. i'm like oh, i love this <laughs> <laughs> you guys took a show that probably otherwise would have been unwatchable and made it glorious i love it so i'm so i'm so glad oh, thank you yes <laughs> i'm now- glad that we didn't offend you. Nah, it takes a lot to offend me. But speaking of offending people, you know, you brought up the controversy, <laughs> the death threats. Well, when it comes to anime that you've done, there's been a few that have uh, raised a few eyebrows on that regard as well. Stuff like Dance of the Vampire Bun, or how about something more recent like Uzaki-chan and all the controversy that came from that show? 
What what goes through your mind when you see that going down? And you're like, oh crap! I got to voice a character from that show. I mean, with Vampire Bund, what's funny is that like I was also doing the script. I adapted the scripts for that show. For me, it was relatively easy. There was only one major change that we had to make, and that was when one of the one of the uh, Eric Vale's character putting the uh, protective sun lotion on my character, and in the Japanese, he sounds a little too excited about it. So. <laughs> Version, we just changed it to him being a little more disgusted by the idea of having to do it. That's really the only change we made other than making sure that everybody knew that she is 500 years old. <laughs> repeatedly saying <laughs> I am 500 years old so that because you know she's animated to look 10 which is <laughs> disturbing but you know it's funny to me because that was like that was such a big deal back then it was like this huge huge dramatic thing and now it shows that are coming out now like Dance in the Vampire Bund is pretty tame comparatively <laughs> I would say I was there when Va- Vampire Bund was first coming out and I saw that yeah but now you got stuff like we mentioned Eater Species Reviewers and uh, again Uzaki-chan oh See, here's the thing about Uzaki that's crazy. I had seen all the rigmarole online and everything. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I got a call from Tia, like, hey, um, I'm going to be doing this show and I would really love to use you. And so I started looking into it. It's about all of the drama because, and I don't know, I could be wrong, but from what I gathered was that people were offended because they thought it was kind of a pedo anime because she looks and acts like a child. And I'm like, but I know women who are in their 20s who are all of five feet that might have a larger chest area that have cute little voices. Like, that's a type of human. You know what I mean? Right? Like, that's, that's not necessarily like a, a child pornography kind of thing. That's just what they call a short stack. It's a cute little girl that's, you know, she's peppy, she's fun, she's of age, but she's just built like a brick house. Like, that's <laughs> how it happens. Yeah. So that part I got over, but then I started looking at the show thinking, well, maybe there's some like really, really awful material in here. Or it gets really gross. And I was absolutely at what a charming show it is. Like, it's all innuendo. Like, there's no real issue. You don't see anything that would, would make you like, I, am I going to let my 16 year old stepson watch it? Maybe not, but I wouldn't be against it because it's like nothing bad is happening. It's just all innuendo and kind of tongue in cheek. So it was a very happy surprise when I started working on it. And I'm like, oh, this show isn't gross. You guys, this show's <laughs> People get worked up over it. You know, it's funny. The, the things you said about, you know, how women actually do look like that. I When I reviewed Uzaki-chan just recently, actually, I just put that video out like a couple of weeks ago, like a week or so ago. I said those exact same things in a rant about people who were complaining about the show. So thank you for validating my point. <laughs> True. Like, I have friends that look like that and did look like that. And sure, you know, I have a friend now that's in her 40s that still plays teenagers because she's she's built like a teenage girl. But is, does that mean she's any less deserving of love or attention? No, not at all. She just is built like a teenager. That's just how it works. <laughs> they exist in reality, guys. They exist. Yeah, people people just don't want to people just want to have, have their ideas and they just don't want to ignore it. Anyway, let's get off that before we get down too far down that rabbit hole. <laughs> We got to keep it us on you. We're talking about you here. So question, the next thing I have to ask is, you know, one of the couple of the main questions I always like to finish out with is one is, you know, with how many top roles you've done, obviously you won't be able to remember everything, but have there ever been any really funny behind the scenes stories you could share? Oh, gosh. Oh, there's so many. Um, well, we were talking about ghost stories earlier. So there was a day where uh, Stephen Foster had brought in a Bible so that I like on my break. I'm not a, an incredibly religious person. I grew up with a Roman Catholic dad and a Southern Baptist mom. So that shows you about where I lie, which is not on the spectrum at all. <laughs> um, so I would like look through it, you know, just to kind of remind myself of what was going on and maybe come up with some stuff. And there was one day where I was on break and I was reading the Bible and Chris Patton walked past and kind of glanced in and then he stopped and he moved back and he looked, he goes, are you reading a Bible? And I was like, yeah. He goes, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to leave before the lightning strikes. <laughs> 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 like, you too. Wow. Um, so we have, there's so many little like 
little things that happen. Um, I watched Aaron Disney fall off of a Vegeta skateboard <laughs> in the <laughs> big open room. I really, I was talking in one of the interviews earlier. I'm like, I need to start documenting these things so that I can start sharing them online because some of the stuff that happens when we're all together is just hilarious. And that's part of what I miss the most about the pandemic and the studios being closed. Like, I love being able to record at home in my pajamas, but I miss the interaction with everybody and getting to hang out with everyone. That is that. That's the part I miss the most. Yeah, I think that's kind of why we've started to see a lot of VAs start to move towards social media, especially with stuff like Discord and Zoom and Twitch to kind of keep that interaction going while, you know, we have to all be separate. So, yeah, it's been been an evolution of that lately. It's been hard because we're all trying to figure out, like, what's going on. And I mean, you guys, too. Like, it's just a it's a whole different world. (laughs) It'll be interesting to see how it all works out. I'm hoping it'll be sooner than later. Oh, of course. Of course. Hopefully. And then, but I, I get the feeling that some things will have changed once we get out of this. Like things will not be the same as they used to be. Last, yeah. Wait, I got Ooh. one last question for you before we wrap things up. This is one I always like to ask. Oh, obviously, you can't tell us all the stuff you've got coming up because you know NDAs and all that. Understandable there. But are there any are there any upcoming projects you can announce, or as I like to say, what can we expect from Monica Real as we head towards the future? <laughs> I love it. Um. Oh my gosh. So I'm in a game called Phantom Breaker that is coming out, I believe, sometime next year. I can talk about that. Um, Golden Kamui is still going on. We're still working on that. So that's fun working on season three. Oh, Black Clover. Uh, Meryl Leona and Secre are still very much a part of Black Clover. Um, I think that might be all I can talk about. But I will tell you guys that I have been working my butt off and there's some really exciting things I cannot wait to talk to you about. But unfortunately, I am still sworn to secrecy for a while. (laughs) But I've been a very busy girl and um, I'm sure you guys will start seeing the results of that pretty soon here. So I'm just time in my studio in the closet (laughs) recording. (laughs) So I'm sure eventually that stuff will all start coming out soon. So it'll be fun. Well, I certainly look forward to it. Uh, Folks, if you guys are watching make sure you check out all of monica's social media info in the uh, in the info box below but regardless that is going to do it for us here today monica it is such a pleasure and an honor to talk with you at last it was so great talking to you thank you for being so patient man this has been a crazy year and i'm glad we could make it happen hey i'd say it was worth the wait. <laughs> thank you <laughs> anyway guys thank you guys for joining me we'll see you guys next time rock on